Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in the shop again today. We have just finished fulfilling the Cork Kickstarter, relaunching the Mark III light. Uh, we are about to ship pre-orders. And despite the fact that this is a brand new light, I've been working on something in secret. Uh, it is, I don't know if you would call it an upgrade. It's kind of a mod uh, for the cork lights. Um, this light has a standard reflector and it gives you a sort of standard beam with a hot spot and some, you know, in the center and some spill over here. But what I've been playing around with is called an aspheric lens, uh, which is this little fella right here. And it is an actual lens, a little bit of flashlight nomenclature for you. In the industry, the little glass bit in front of here is not a lens, it is actually called a window. Uh, and a window is a planner lens or a lens that has no curvature on either side. So glass bit, call it a window. This, however, is an actual lens uh, and you will be able to see this is a double convex lens. Uh, there's actually more curvature on the front side than the back side. And basically what this is gonna allow us to do is to, not unlike a slide projector, we are going to project an image of the surface of the LED. So pretend the surface of the LED is your slide. You put that in, this lens is going to focus that picture uh, onto whatever you're gonna shine it on. This might be easier to demonstrate than to explain, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, in the past, all corks, and sort of most flashlights in general, they tend to be glued shut. And there are a couple reasons that companies do this. Um, some of them make sense. Actually, most of them make sense to some degree. Uh, but I sort of came up in this industry um, working on flashlights and around people who like to work on flashlights and modify them and change them. So we've not glued the head of the cork together. Uh, so the head actually separates basically where the knurling ends in the back here. Uh, if you've got strong hands or, you know, rubber pads or something, it should be pretty easy to open this. Uh, we are gonna have some wrenches up on the site that just make it super easy. It also makes it easier to get it tighter. Uh, now, I guess this is a side note. One thing that can happen is there are two threaded connections here when you put the head on, if I can put it on, there we go. So they're the threads that mate the head to the body, and then there are the threads that mate the two pieces of the head together. Now, here's how fasteners work. Whichever one of these connections is tighter is not gonna wanna unscrew. So you want the two head pieces to be tighter than the head to the body. And really the head to the body doesn't need to be tight, literally finger tight is plenty. Uh, you want the threaded connections, the two pieces of the head, to be hand tight. And I guess I'll demonstrate that momentarily. So we're going to take the body off uh, and then just grab the two pieces of the head. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was assuming just because I was shooting a video that this would be really tight and I couldn't get it out. So just unscrew that. And here we are inside the light. So this is a Nietzsche 319 LED. Uh, and there's this little plastic surround that goes around the LED and helps orient it. One of the reasons why I wanted to use the 319, it has a hexagon-shaped die. Most LED dies are square, and when you pair it with an aspheric lens, basically you're projecting a square, which is kind of cool. It's really not that usable. I feel like it's just kind of distracting, and after the novelty wears off, it's annoying because it also has a lot of orientation in terms of whether that square is at what angle. With the hexagon, you're still going to see the hexagon a little bit more up close, but once that beam travels a little bit, it almost looks round, which is kind of the desired effect. So this is really the perfect LED to pair with an aspheric lens. Yes, you can get a round beam using a square LED, but you have to basically defocus the lens. So you have to move it closer or further away from the LED basically to make it blurry and that will make it round but you're also losing intensity if you are not fully focused. So with the 319 and the aspheric we get full focus and a decently round beam that is quite usable. All right so the, there's not much to this. 
uh, you want to knock out the reflector. I don't suggest pushing it because you can get it cocked sideways and then it can get stuck. So literally you can just tip it out and drop it out. In this case, the window came out with the reflector. We can set those aside. When you put in the aspheric lens, there's a taller dome uh, and a shorter dome. The taller pointier end actually goes out the front of the light. So we're just gonna drop that in. This is a direct replacement. This little white bit is a piece of Delrin. It is exactly the same shape as the reflector. It's just made out of white plastic. Uh, and the reason for that is, well, let me show you. That this is a video, right? I can show you stuff. We machine these reflectors in-house, just on this machine, out of frame over here. Uh, I'm gonna put this back together with the standard reflector. And again, you don't wanna push it in. You just kinda wanna wiggle it gently. And if it feels like it's gonna get stuck, stop! Because you're gonna get it jammed in there and then you're gonna have big problems. All right, now all we do is screw, I guess you could sort of call that the pill. You screw this what's he doozy back in. Make sure it's snug. Uh, it is gonna seal against the O-ring in the front. Get the battery back in here. Screw this down. So now we have the aspheric lens with the normal reflector in place. And um, let's see if we can see this on camera. All right, so oh, where do I point it? Here we go. You see all these speckles? Uh, it's super distracting. We're also getting this really dark ring around the outside. But what the cool part is, as you can see, this is incredibly focused. Uh, and I'm not sure I'm white balanced correctly, but we can use a still photo for this one. You can basically see the shape of the LED die. And this is going to be super bright. Uh, we're going to get about, it's not a ton, but maybe 15% more distance out of the aspheric lens. Uh, than the standard reflector. So with the Quark QK16L, that's gonna take your maximum distance from about, <clears throat> excuse me, from about 170 meters up to 200 meters, which is pretty awesome. So this is basically like a little searchlight that you can put in your pocket. Um, so let's get rid of all this ugliness. And again, this is why we have this little white plastic bit instead of using the standard reflector, as it just looks bad. Um, all right, so again, better to tap than push. Don't push, because you're gonna ruin stuff. All right, make sure that lens is oriented correctly. I'm actually not totally sure what happens if you put it in backwards, maybe we'll try that. White reflector goes in. And again, you see how it's not going down. I'm just gonna gently move it around and it'll fall into place because all these parts fit together quite precisely. Back together. Et voila. So it's a little hard to see on the camera, but we're getting a really tight center spot. Uh, and you can see there is still some spill coming out and if I move this around, well, it's pretty hard to see. Um, so we're, almost all the light is coming out in the center spot. When you're actually in the dark using this, there's actually still enough spill coming from around this that you can still navigate up close, but basically 90% of the light is gonna be going down range and the remaining, ten, yeah, you can see it a little bit, the remaining 10% is gonna make it so you can see up close and not trip over stuff while you're walking around. Anyway, that is super awesome. And you can see, um, as you get further away, I got some coffee jitters. As you get further away, the spot gets bigger. Um, this is not a super, super tight aspheric lens. So if you're a flashlight nerd, you might think of aspheric lenses as, you know, projecting an extremely small beam a long way. And like a normal reflector, the spread of that beam is going to be a relationship between the sort of length and diameter uh, of your light shaping device. So if you have a bigger aspheric or a bigger reflector, you're going to get tighter focus, essentially. Um, 
I'm mostly pointing that out to set expectations. This isn't gonna be like a laser beam, but it really is kind of like a spotlight, like a stage light that you know you would use on stage to shine on a, a performer of some sort. Anyway, that's that. It's pretty awesome. It's really easy to swap out. Uh, we have got these up on the website now if you wanna try it out. It's not terribly expensive. Um, one of the things to note as you can see here that this lens is a little bit proud of the front of the light and this is not ideal but we had a bunch of limitations in implementing this and it's just the way it is that was the only way to make it work so you can't set the light uh, on its front but if you have the tail stand camped you can still do that this is a plastic lens it will get scratched up eventually me personally i'm not someone who worries a lot about scratches and fingerprints and stuff like that on lenses. I know some people are super picky about that and that's okay for you. For me, it doesn't really affect the performance very much, so I don't really worry about it. The kit does come with two lenses, so when one gets beat up, you can just replace it. And again, it's so easy, it's not a big deal. Uh, so basically, we're gonna consider this a wear part. Uh, anywho, I think that's that. Check it out. It's on the website. I hope you have fun with it. Please leave some feedback. Let me know what you're using it for uh, and how you're getting along with the Quark Aspheric Kit. So thanks again for joining me and we will talk to you guys soon.